Okay, we're going to be in the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, <clears throat> and then he starts with the Beatitudes, but Jesus is teaching to believers. His disciples came unto him, and this is who he's teaching them. He's teaching them. These, are, these, blessed, these, are, these Beatitudes, they're for born-again believers. But there were lost people there too. So he was teaching the disciples, but he was also at the same time showing the lost people what, it could, what could be for them also. So just like here in the church, we got saved people in the church, we got lost people in the church. So the preacher's not just preaching to us, he's preaching also to the lost so they can see what we have and what they can have if they wanted it. It says that he taught them. These verses that we're going to read from the Lord, He's the one teaching us. The, all these blessed that I'm going to read to you, these are the words of God, all right? This is not, I know we in here, I'm pretty sure, we know this is not just a book that we read, just like any other book. Some people read books like a book. They read through it, put it down, get another book. This is not a book for reading. This is a book for studying. You don't just read through the Bible and say, oh, I read through the, I read the Bible and that's it. If you did that, you didn't get anything. The Bible is to study. These are the words of God. And that's, I've taken that to heart. When I read the scriptures, man, it's like I picture that God is speaking to me himself. And he is. But I try to picture that he's, I hear his voice speaking to me. I'm just hoping y'all get what I, what I get. Because I love it. I love it. When I'm reading the scriptures, I'm in another place. It's okay to amen in here. Okay. Let me say this. The wife's heard it before. You know Moses? When God told Moses to go to Pharaoh, and Moses said, I'm not an eloquent speaker. He said, I'm not very smart either. Well, I know exactly how Moses feels. Because <laughs> I am not an eloquent speaker at all. But I try to get the word of God. The Beatitudes, okay. The Lord is going to teach us here. And the only way we can do the Beatitudes is by doing Matthew 22.37. Matthew 22.37 Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the only way you're going to be able to do the Beatitudes. Once, once the Lord shows us what the Beatitudes are, this is the only way we're going to be able to do them. Is by giving the Lord all of our heart, all of our mind and soul. And we don't do this, you know, some people do this once in their life. They give their life to the Lord and then that's it. They go on about their business. Luke 9, 23. And he said unto them all, this is the Lord. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Being a Christian is a daily thing. It's not you walk the aisle, get baptized, and that's it. I'm sorry, but there's people who do that. Right here it says it's a daily thing. You give your heart, your soul, and your mind daily, 100%. He said all. He didn't say 90% because with that 10%, oh, we can do a lot with 10%. That's not of the Lord. And so that's why he says, I want all of you. So to do, when we learn the, the Beatitudes here, the only way we can do them is by doing this. By giving them all of our heart. Yeah, so some people uh, accept him as a savior, but they don't make him the Lord of their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants all of it. <laughs> That's for sure. It's, and you, you know, die to what? You know, what do you die to? You die to the flesh and you die to the world. You know, the Bible says we're no longer of this world, right? That we're separated. But we died to the world. We died to the world. We're no longer of this world. In Acts 1 8, it says, it says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Holy Ghost. We believe in the Trinity. Who is the Holy Ghost? God. So who lives in you? God. So do you have power? Can can we say the devil made me do it? No. The devil can't make you do anything. You allow him. You can allow him. But he can't make you do anything. There is no excuse for us 
to not do the things the Lord has told us to do. Because he is living in us and we have the power. Uh, I see a lot of defeated Christians. They're living defeated lives because they don't use the power that is in them. We have the power. We, we're children of God. God lives in us. He lives in us. And we've got to recognize that. We have power. I'm not just little Jesse here on earth. No, I'm little Jesse here with God living in me. I've got all the power I need to overcome temptations. All the teachings I do, that's one of the things I try to really push. Is say, hey, you've got the power of God in you. You, you have God inside of you. If, if you sin, if you fall to something, well, not fall, because we do fall. We're not perfect here. But if, you, if you're allowing things to get to you in your life, remember who your Lord is. There's times I've thought I, I'm at the end, bad thing of a Christian, many of us have. The curse we have is we have a short memory. We forgot what he did over here. Here we are again in some situation and we forgot what, how, he got it through, how he got us through it over here. But we've got to remember God. God is our Father. This world is not our Father. Everything you learned while you was growing up, if you, didn't live, if you wasn't raised in a Christian family, everything you learned off of TV, magazines, or whatever, that's of the world. We're no longer under that. We're under God's kingdom now. We're under His kingdom. We, we follow the Lord. You follow the Lord, you, do, you give Him all your heart, soul, and mind, I guarantee you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. Now, there's going to be, like with me, there were some sad times. But again, how does the world handle those sad times? Suicide is so high. Depression is so high. Ulcers. All this is high because people don't, don't know how to turn to the Lord. So, if you just so happen to be a Dr. Phil fan in here, you just heard the Word of God. God said, forsake the counsel of the ungodly. And when people who counsel... If they're not pointing you to the Word of God or to the Lord, it's worldly counsel. Psalms 1, 1, I think it is. So that's why I say that about Dr. Phil. And I, I mention, I'll even mention preachers. If I, believe, if I see that they're a wolf, I'm going to mention them. Now, I know some people say, well, you shouldn't mention names. No, Jesus did. Jesus pointed right at the religious leaders and called them hypocrites. And what, he is the shepherd. I'm just a little shepherd. I have a family to watch over. But you look most on they say the same thing. They want your money. Oh yeah. Well <laughs> many of us many of us in here know that. But I am I am a little shepherd here. And what kind of shepherd would I be if I didn't point out a wolf to you guys? But I, I'm just wanting to show you right now that if I mention names it's because it's a wolf. And I and I'm gonna know that I know that I know is a wolf before I say anything. But they are wolves out there. And I will mention names. And, and again, the reason I do it is because that's the way I learned from my Lord to do it. He pointed out the wolves to the people, and I follow him. Now, like I said, you can only do these things in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Beatitudes. Now, if you're trying to do the Beatitudes, and it's, you're not born again, guess how you're going to be doing the Beatitudes? You're going to be trying to do bad, the Beatitudes by gritting your teeth. Okay, You're going to be grinding your teeth, gritting your teeth, making fists. I can do this, I can do this. But when, it, when you're doing it that way, it's not the Holy Spirit. That's how religious people do it. You know, there's a difference between religious people and Christians. When you're, when you're trying to do the Beatitudes without the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not succeed, succeed at this. You'll see, once we start into the Beatitude, you'll see, man, I can only do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm glad y'all are here, because the first part of this teaching is the key. You know, if you come later on, and you don't receive this, it's going to be hard to understand the rest of the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes is not a poem. They're real. And it'll make a true, true, deep Christian out of you when you understand them. Before I get started, let's look at verse 20. This is the key to the whole teaching. Verse 20 of Matthew 5, further down. It says, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now right here he's talking about religious leaders, the scribes and Pharisees. These were religious leaders. He's saying except our righteousness is higher than those of the religious leaders. 
we cannot enter into heaven. And you're thinking, well, these were religious leaders. Well, when you read the Bible, you'll find that these religious leaders, they pointed to themselves. They didn't point to the Lord. They pointed to themselves. This is what Jesus told the ones who thought they were righteous in Matthew's chapter 23, verse 27 and 28. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whitened tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Even so you also outwardly outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Now when you see the word woe, when you're starting to read the word of God and you see woe, you better pay attention. Because that woe means the wrath of God is getting ready to become to come on those who's, who he's speaking to. And right here he's speaking to the religious leaders and he's saying woe unto them. The wrath of God is coming down on them. These men were spiritually dead, these religious leaders. Luke 9.60 But Jesus told him, Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. We're well, saying, Let non-believers bury their dead. Now what I'm trying to show here is, We're dead. We're dead until we become believers, Until we become born again. Luke 15.24 It says, For this son of mine was dead, And has now returned to life. He was lost. But now he is found. So he was dead. John 11.25 Jesus said unto her. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Though he were dead. Yet shall he live. Again. You are dead until you become a believer. And these religious leaders. They were worse than non-believers. Non-believers. And they'll just come out and tell you. No I don't believe in God. But these were religious leaders who were supposed to know and believe in God. And the Lord called them hypocrites. And there's many among us out there that are act to be believers, but they're just acting. We have religious leaders that way also. There's a lot of wolves in the churches. And we need to read the word of God so we can recognize a wolf. A wolf is someone who, who does not live by the word of God. They take the scriptures and turn them around to make them mean what they want them to mean. So when we read the Word of God, we need to understand what we need to study the Word of God so we can understand. Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Speaking about the Pharisees, these religious leaders right here, it says they trusted in themselves that they were religious, I mean, that they were righteous. And despised others. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee. The other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God. I thank thee. That I am not as other men are. Extortioners. Unjust. Adulterers. Or even as this publican. Now this is a religious leader. This is the way he's praying. He's lifting his own self up. Verse 12, he says, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now, this is a man who's boasting himself up. Look what I've done. He's pointing to himself. Now, verse 13, the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smoked upon his breath, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Now these scriptures that I just read, just like I said, the religious leader was the one bragging about the show he can put on, how self-righteous he was. And the publican, which was a tax collector, which they were known, they were known for cheating people out of money. So you would think, he would be the one that was acting self-righteous and not the religious leader. But no, he was the one that was poor in spirit. Why was he poor in spirit? Because it says that he couldn't even look up to heaven. He knew he was a sinner. And he couldn't even look up to heaven. And that's the way I feel sometimes. That I'm so unworthy to even look to the Lord. Or even ask him for anything. 
But the reason I do is because he tells me I can. And that's why I do it. But other, other than that, I don't even feel right to pray to the Lord. Because I, I know I'm so unworthy to be his. But praise God, I read the word and I know where my heart is. And I know I want to live for the Lord. My heart is for the Lord. So this is why I can do it. But this is part of being poor in the spirit when you can't even look up to the Lord. Pharisees believe in God, but then the devil believes in God also. These religious leaders, they had the first five books of the Bible memorized and Psalms also. They had to have those memorized. When they would tithe, they would have trumpets blown to see to be seen of men. They wore long robes so they could be recognized as being spiritual. When they prayed, they did it out loud and repeated the same thing over and over just to show, again, how spiritual they were. People would look at them as being very spiritual. And they didn't preach to the lost people. They condemned them. They condemned the lost people. But Jesus said in John 3.17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So through him, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved be saved from what? Be saved from hell. These religious leaders, they preached to show how good they were and how bad the people were. Now, they have preachers who put on a big show just like these religious leaders did. They wear the robes, they wear the hats, or they get up uh, on stage and they sit in these chairs that have these high backs like they're really somebody. This is a show, people. And there's a lot of shows going on. Well, I'm not going to get into that. But watch what you... Watch what you see on TV, be careful. There's a lot of wolves out there. And it's hard to recognize them because they look like men of God. They act like men of God. They might even preach like a man of God. But they're wolves. They're either in it for the money, which most of them are. Or they're in it just to be glorified. Just have, so they can have glorification to themselves. You know, you have many people who are outwardly religious on the outside and they're moral they're good decent people and they say believe they believe in god which i just told you about that and they're kind and they help others many of us make the mistake that someone that does this we believe they're christians in titus it says the same thing as matthew 20 says not just the religious leaders he's just saying not just do the religious leaders are actors hypocrites but it also says in Titus 3.5, not just talking to religious leaders like we have been, but right here in Titus 3.5, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Now, this is covering everybody, not just religious leaders. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Not according to how good we have been, but according to his mercy, he saved us. His mercy. Not did our good outweigh our bad. That's not the way we got saved. Not how religious we were, because these religious leaders up there are very, are very religious. But the verse says at the end, it says, But by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Again, by giving your life to the Lord and Him, Him renewing your heart, renewing your mind by the Holy Spirit. The Beatitudes are going to show us how to be right with the Lord. Jesus is shown here that these religious leaders didn't live this way that we're going to read. They have an external way of showing they're religious, but Jesus wants an eternal walk that is from the heart. That's what he wants. And just like them, if we're just religious on the outside, we're not going to see heaven. Remember these words. Now, verse 3 of chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The word blessed means to be content, to be satisfied. It means more than happiness. It means more than a, a good emotional state. It's a, it's a place where your heart can rest and you can sleep at night because you've given your problems, whatever they are, to the Lord. It's what you have between you and God. No matter how things are between your spouse or your family or your friends, your health, your money, your job, doesn't matter how these things are. We're not affected by the world. We're not, we're not affected by these things. 
because we have separated ourselves from the world. We now live for the Lord. And we we should learn how to give our problems to him and believe that he takes them and he takes care of us. We need to believe that. The world has preachers and teachers that say we should be wealthy and we can have anything we want. They don't believe in being poor in the spirit. They don't believe in being poor in anything. But Luke, the living Bible says in Luke twelve fifteen, it says, talking about speak, uh, Jesus is saying, beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Believe me, there's a lot of people out there who believe their success is because of what they have. It's not who they are with the Lord. It's what they have. How much money do they have? And how much do they possess? Material things. And right here it says in Luke 12, 15, Beware. It's saying beware of them. Guard against every kind of greed. This verse is not very popular in, the, in many religions. Like I said, they have men who preach that you need to be rich to be happy. We just read, we're going to read the Beatitudes. And this belief or this thought is not in there. The Beatitudes are for us to have a close walk and a peace of God that we can't get in anything or anybody else. That's what the Beatitudes are. We can't fill spiritual needs with physical things. This poor in spirit means we're bankrupt. We owe a debt we can't pay. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. We couldn't pay the wages. The wages. So we had death. We were headed, well, like I said earlier, we were already dead. But the wages of sin is death. We're not talking about money. Poor in spirit is when you realize you are nothing when you don't have the Lord. Nothing. We need to remember who owns us now. When we gave our life to the Lord, he paid a debt we could not pay. So since he paid it, we now belong to him and not to ourselves. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Ephesians 1.14 The spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we should praise and glorify Him. And we should. We should. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day. We should pray, be praising the Lord and glorifying Him. For taking us from death to life. But some of us don't act that way. Some of us don't act like we, we had just gotten saved. And the Lord has saved us from hell. And brought us back to life. We're going to learn how... To please and satisfy the Lord. These Beatitudes, like I said before, there there's a lot in the Beatitudes, a lot. A lot than what we can what we read. There's a lot there. We're gonna learn how to please our God. How to satisfy him. If we don't understand what blessed or the poor in spirit is, then we won't understand the rest of the rest of the blessings that are in here. But blessed are the poor in spirit. Make sure we understand that before I go on to blessed are they who mourn, okay? Make sure we understand that one. Our spirit compared to God? There is no comparison. There is no comparison. Do we have, fo do we have total faith in the Word? We gotta, these are questions we need to ask ourselves. Do we have total faith in the Word of God? They don't have a problem walking with the Lord as long as the Scriptures fit them. Now, there's some things that uh, we we either ignore it or we just flat out disobey it. One of them, I'm going to give a few of them that some people have a hard time with. And I'm not saying I, do, I don't, I didn't. But like I said, I, I believe all, the Word of God. I believe all of it. And in Matthew 6, chapter 6, verses 31 through 34, Therefore, take no thought saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with, wherewithal shall we clo be clothed? Jesus said in John 6.35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
So the first part of this chapter, uh, I mean, verse 31, he says, don't think, take no thought of that. Because he already said in John 35, I am this. He's going to feed us. He's going to clothe us, clothe us. He's going to give us what we need, okay? In verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Right here the Lord says, take no thought for the morrow. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. That's what we're not, yeah, we're not promised that we're even going to be here tomorrow. Either either he's going to come or he's going to take one of us. Okay? Or take all of us. But he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's meaning today is more than enough for you to take care of. That's what he's saying right there. Today, what you have is enough for you to take care of. And that's why in Matthew six eleven in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. It is, doesn't say give us this week or this month. It says, give us this day our daily bread. Give us today what we need for today, is what he's saying here. So, can we take no thought for tomorrow? Can we do that? If I'm here tomorrow, my Lord will take care of me. I have faith in that. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. Because I say that, and say you can't do it, that doesn't mean I have greater faith than you. doesn't mean that at all. Because there are some things you might believe in that I have a problem with. So I'm not putting my faith here and y'all's faith here. Don't even think I'm doing that. Okay? But the Lord told me, he said, hey, don't worry about tomorrow. I got tomorrow. 1 Corinthians 10.13 God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Many of us have a hard time with that one. Now, I know I have, and I guess y'all have, maybe not, but I know there's times I've said, Lord, I can't handle this one. I can't take care of this one. Well, I can't, but what I'm talking about is, is okay, this one, you made a mistake on this one because I cannot handle this. But he says it right here. He will not, he will not suffer you more than what you can take. Pray, I mean, that's amen. I know I'm going to go through this life, and whatever happens to me, I can handle it. If it happens to me, God told, done told me, you can handle it, Jesse. I'm letting this happen to you because I know you can handle it. Amen? I mean, when my little girl went to be with the Lord at five years old, well, I really didn't handle it because he carried me the whole time. But he did, but he took care of it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we need to believe this, what he says. Whatever happens to us today, tomorrow, the next day, if it happens to us, it's because God allowed it to happen. Just like Job. Same thing. Believe that. Believe the scriptures. Believe the scriptures. That's all I can say. Believe the scriptures. Believe what your father tells you. Luke 3.14. Be content with your wages. There are some of us who are not content with our wages. We want to make more. Or we want to move up. If you're walking with the Lord... He's giving you what you need. If you're walking with the Lord, He's giving you what you need. If He wants you to have more, He'll give you more. But it says, be content with your wages. Don't fuss about what you're making. Or don't fuss about if you're not moving up on your job. If the Lord wants you to move, be moved up, you're going to be moved up. If He wants you to make more money, He'll, 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 get, he'll do that also. But right here it says, be content with your wages. We need to... I'm just comparing us to the Lord. We're poor in spirit. Now, Ephesians 5, it says, Husbands, are you loving your wife as Christ loved the church? For most, a lot of husbands, that's not too easy. <laughs> well, husbands, are you loving your wife? Are you loving your wife as Christ loved the church? And how many times has the Lord had to forgive us because of our... <coughs> Meaning. So husbands, are we forgiving our wives when they do things? But that's what he says, husbands. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. And, well, I'm, there's some who can't do that. Who don't know how to do it. 
And then also on the other hand, wives, are you submitting to your husbands as unto the Lord? As, I'm not asking any of them. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, this is what the Lord says. Wives, are you submitting yourself to your husbands as unto the Lord? That last part right there, as unto the Lord. Ooh, man. That's rough. Oh, Lord, I can submit to you. No problem. But my husband? Well, that's something else. But that's not what he said. He didn't say, well, you can go ahead and submit to me. But that's but what he said is, are you doing it? Because if you're not, for one thing, if you're not submitting yourselves to your husbands, you're already not submitting yourself to the Lord. Because that goes together. All right? Now, I'm just giving you some scriptures that are, that are for some people, they're hard to do. Also, in Malachi 3.10, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, Herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not be room enough for you to receive it. Tithing, for some people, that's very hard to do. It's hard to tithe. Well, if I, if I give this 10%, then I'm not going to well, no. The Lord said this. The Lord said it right here. The Lord said, give your 10%, give me the 10%. And see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out down blessings on you. Don't we want blessings? So, he says, if you want blessings, give me 10%. Well, is that from the gross or from the net? Well, it's whatever you want to be blessed on. The more you give, the more blessings. Uh, but I'm just pointing here, some people have a problem with tithing. Don't know if that goes for any of us in here, but like I said, what I'm pointing out is, there's some things in the Bible that we have a hard time with. It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Remember, this was written by men, but who inspired them to write it? The Lord. So whatever is said in this Bible, we need to believe it. We need to believe it. We need to believe the Word of God in anything. Whatever He says, we need to believe Him. God helps those who know, who know they need help. We need to know we need the Lord. We need to know that we need His help. We need to know that. We are blessed. We are blessed when we accept and believe His words. We're blessed. Faith, we have to believe this. We have to believe it. Because if we don't believe everything that's in here, we're wasting our time. We're wasting our time. We have to believe everything in here. If we have trouble doing everything, if you have trouble tithing or wives to the husbands or husbands to the if you're having a problem with that, take it to the Lord. Just say, Lord, this is hard to do. I don't, you know, He'll help you with it. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're having a problem with something, take it to the Lord. Just don't throw up in your hands and say, I can't do it. That's why you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. God lives in you. Amen. God lives in us. We... We are blessed, okay? We are blessed. And we have more power than what we think we have. And we as Christians, we need to start showing that power. We need to start showing it. Because we are blessed. I mean, we are the light of the world. Like I said last week, we, we can't be hid unless we hide it. We can hide our light. But if we shine as Christ did, can't be hid. People's gonna, people are going to see it. He does that when we get out the way. When we get out of the way and let Him work in us. Because sometimes we get in the way. The, la the last verse of this chapter, verse uh, 48, it says, Be ye therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We know we can't be perfect until we go to be with Him. But He had to say, Be ye perfect. Because if He would have said, Okay, be ye 90% like me, then we got 10% to play with. And I can imagine what we can do with 10%. All right? You hear what I'm saying? So you read verses like this. Well, God, how does he expect me to be perfect? I mean, perfect. Well, one, you got you to gotta know your father. And this is the only way to know him. And we know we're not going to be perfect until that time comes where we're going to be with him. But this is why I'm saying, hey, he says that because we need to strive to be perfect. That verse there, since it's in the same chapter, I just wanted to kind of explain what that means. Because people are like, I've had a guy tell me, he says, 
We're supposed to be perfect. The Bible says that using this verse. Well, no, it doesn't mean we're going to be perfect now. What he's saying is, like I said, he couldn't say be you 90% like me. He couldn't say that. Let's see, be perfect. So we're stri we strive, we live to be just like our Lord. Following and understanding the Beatitudes will help us, are going to help us to be perfect. Okay? Now, it didn't say be ye sinless. It didn't say that. It said be ye perfect. Be like the Lord. He is perfect. It says for us to be like Him. But it didn't say be ye sinless. All right? There's a difference there. The Beatitudes is, is a great teaching. I'm going to love teaching on it. But the power of the Holy Spirit, I would love to teach on the power of the Holy Spirit, what we have in us. I say it because I see a lot of, I see a lot of born-again Christians living a defeated life. And it hurts me because I, I know they're born again. I know they're brothers or sisters, but they're letting this world get to them or whatever it is. They're letting it get to them instead of using the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, when we realize born in the Spirit, we'll, we'll be like Peter. In Luke chapter 5, verse 8, when Jesus told Peter to send the boats back up because they weren't catching anything, and Peter said there's nothing out there, and Jesus said, send the boats back out. Well, verse uh, 8, when Simon Peter saw it, saw what was happening, he fell down at his Jesus' knees saying, Deport from me. For I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. That's being poor in spirit. That's humbling yourself, knowing you are, you shouldn't even be in the presence of the Lord. Because you know you. And you know who he is. You recognize, Peter recognized who Jesus was and called him Lord. Called him Lord. Je Peter recognized who Jesus was. And what did he do? He fell down to his knees and said, depart from me. Peter realized how poor in spirit he was. Romans seven eighteen, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. We need to take that in. We need to take that in. Without the Lord, nothing is good in us. Nothing. Without the Lord. It says it right there, Romans seven eighteen. Let me show you biblically, biblically what poor in the spirit is. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. I'm going to read these. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from youth. From youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out a after him, and smoked him, and delivered it out of, the, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smoked him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this, un and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defiled the armies of God. Now, I really like David. There's more here, but just real quick. David, he said, this Philistine is defiling the Lord. Now, I can, I, I can see where David's coming from. Just like I told you about Christmas, how they put Xmas for the party, that, that got to me. And I did something about it. But I, I, know what, I know how David was feeling here. Hey, this guy is putting down my father. All right? Verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said, Unto David go, and the Lord be with thee. And we know the rest of the story. David went, and he killed Goliath. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, did David make himself a hero? Did he boast on what he did? He just did it and went back to being the boy again. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 18, And David said unto Saul, Who am I? Because Saul said that he could have his daughter in marriage. David said unto Saul, Who am I? 
And what is my life or my father's family in Israel that I should be son in the law, son in law to the king? After David did all, killed the, all of Israel was scared of the giant. They couldn't find no one to go out there and fight the Philistine, right? Goliath. And David did it. And like I said, after he did it, he did, what did he do? Yeah, he, I mean, this, this is after he did that, even now, after he killed the Philistine, the giant, now he's saying, hey, I, who am I to marry your daughter? You know, he's saying, I'm nothing. Why? Who? You know, this is your daughter, the king's daughter. He knew who he was. All right. So this is this is the kind of poor in spirit I'm talking about, where you you don't elevate yourself because you know who you are. All right. And David did the same thing right here. First Samuel 18, verse 23. And Saul's servant spoke those words in his ears of David. And David saith, see that to you a light thing to be a king's sons in law, seeing that I'm a poor man and lightly esteemed. This is David. Now he he could have he could have done something about you know he could have made himself look who I am after what he did. When all of the armies of Israel, we're talking all of, I tell people after I, I made a study on this and I I would tell them you can ask them, was you a was you a David today, or was you the army of Israel against Goliath? The armies of Israel was scared of the giant. But the man of God went and faced them. We do this every day in our life. Are we the armies of Israel that was scared of the giant? Or are we David who went out there knowing that God was going to be with them? Well, I'm just showing you what part of what poor in spirit is. Is when you're, you don't elevate yourself. Poor in spirit is, is when you become totally dependent on the Lord. And that word totally means totally. It means you're dependent on the Lord 100%. You're not saying, well, you know, I can take care of this part of my life or no. You totally 100% dependent on the Lord. That's what poor in the spirit is. When we get to this this point in our lives where we know that, I mean know this in the heart that we totally dependent on him, that's when we can say I know what poor in the spirit is. Now, that doesn't mean we're nobody. We're children of the Lord. So don't take it wrong. Oh, we're poor in spirit. You know, poor me. No, we're poor in spirit compared to the Lord, but we're children of the Lord. Do you see what I'm saying? We're not here. We're children of God. That's all I know how to say. We're somebody because we're children of God in God's eyes. Now, in the world, we're just like the world. We have sin. But we ask for forgiveness from here for our sins. The world just sin. They don't care. You know, they just sin because they want to enjoy themselves. But we're children of God. I wish the Lord would give me the words because I know what I'm thinking here, but it's hard for it to come out this way. It's children of God. And I mean, I mean, do we really comprehend who we belong to, who our father is? Who, When it says Abba in the, in the Bible, it's like daddy. Our father is God. The one who made the heavens and the earth. The one who made everything. Everything. That's our father. He owns everything. And what did he say? We're heirs. We're joint heirs with Christ. So if we're heirs, but we don't want this earth. Now when we get to heaven, <laughs> yeah, that's different. But we're children of God. So when I'm saying poor spirit, please don't mistake in me that I'm trying to put us down here. That's not what I'm trying to do. Because we have to be poor in spirit to do the rest of them. And that's the main thing I've been pointing out. We all we know we're sinners. We know we are. But we have forgiveness. We have to forgive. Just like I said, the only difference between us and them is we have the Lord that we can pray to and ask for forgiveness.